America is both natural and necessary. And in the United States, both of my predecessors, one a Democrat, one a Republican, worked to bring us closer, leading to increased trade and a landmark civil nuclear agreement. So since that time, people in both our countries have asked, what's next? How can we build on this progress and realize the full potential of our partnership? And that's what I want to address today. The future that the United States seeks in an interconnected world and why I believe that India is indispensable to this vision. How we can forge a truly global partnership, not just in one or two areas, but across many. Not just for our mutual benefit, but for the benefit of the world. Of course, only Indians can determine India's national interests and how to advance them on the world stage. But I stand before you today because I am convinced that the interests of the United States and the interests we share with India are best advanced in partnership. I believe that. The United States seeks security, the security of our country, our allies, and partners. We seek prosperity, a strong and growing economy in an open international economic system. We seek respect for universal values, and we seek a just and sustainable international order that promotes peace and security by meeting global challenges through stronger global cooperation. Now, to advance these interests, I have committed the United States to comprehensive engagement with the world based on mutual interest and mutual respect. And a central pillar of this engagement is forging deeper cooperation with 21st century centers of influence, and that must necessarily include India. Now, India is not the only emerging power in the world. But relationships between our countries is unique, for we are two strong democracies whose constitutions begin with the same words, the same revolutionary words, we the people. We are two great republics dedicated to the liberty and justice and equality of all people. And we are two free market economies where people have the freedom to pursue ideas and innovation that can change the world. And that's why I believe that India and America are indispensable partners in meeting the challenges of our time. Since taking office, I've therefore made our relationship a priority. I was proud to welcome Prime Minister Singh for the first official state visit of my presidency. For the first time ever, our governments are working together across the whole range of common challenges that we face. And let me say it as clearly as I can. The United States not only welcomes India as a rising global power, we fervently support it and we have worked to help make it a reality. Together with our partners, we have made the G20 the premier forum for international economic cooperation, bringing more voices to the table of global economic decision-making, and that has included India. We've increased the role of emerging economies like India at international financial institutions. We valued India's important role at Copenhagen, where for the first time all major economies committed to take action to confront climate change and to stand by those actions. We salute India's long history as a leading contributor to United Nations peacekeeping missions. And we welcome India as it prepares to take its seat on the United Nations Security Council. In short, with India assuming its rightful place in the world, we have a historic opportunity to make the relationship between our two countries a defining partnership of the century ahead. And I believe we can do so by working together 
in three important areas. First, as global partners, we can promote prosperity in both our countries. Together, we can create the high-tech, high-wage jobs of the future. With my visit, we are now ready to begin implementing our civil nuclear agreement. This will help meet India's growing energy needs and create thousands of jobs in both of our countries. We need to forge partnerships in high-tech sectors like defense and civil space. So we've removed Indian organizations from our so-called entity list, and we will work to remove and reform our controls on exports. Both of these steps will ensure that Indian companies seeking high-tech trade and technologies from America are treated the same as our very closest allies and partners. We can pursue joint research and development to create green jobs, give India more access to cleaner, affordable energy, meet the commitments we made at Copenhagen, and show the possibilities of low-carbon growth. And together, we can resist the protectionism that stifles growth and innovation. The United States remains and will continue to remain one of the most open economies in the world. And by opening markets and reducing barriers to foreign investment, India can realize its full economic potential as well. As G20 partners, we can make sure the global economic recovery is strong and is durable. And we can keep striving for a Doha round that is ambitious and is balanced, with the courage to make the compromises that are necessary so global trade works for all economies. Together, we can strengthen agriculture. Cooperation between Indian and American researchers and scientists sparked the Green Revolution. Today, India is a leader in using technology to empower farmers, like those I met yesterday, who get free updates on market and weather conditions on their cell phones. And the United States is a leader in agricultural productivity and research. Now, as farmers and rural areas face the effects of climate change and drought, we'll work together to spark a second, more sustainable, evergreen revolution. Together, we're improving Indian weather forecasting systems before the next monsoon season. We aim to help millions of Indian farmers, farming households save water and increase productivity, improve food processing so crops don't spoil on the way to market, and enhance climate and crop forecasting to avoid losses that cripple communities and drive up food prices. And as part of our food security initiative, we're going to share India's expertise with farmers in Africa. And this is an indication of India's rise, that we can now export hard-earned expertise to countries that see India as a model for agricultural development. It's another powerful example of how America and Indian partnership can address an urgent global challenge. Because the wealth of a nation also depends on the health of its people, we'll continue to support India's effort against diseases like tuberculosis, and HIV-AIDS. And as global partners, we'll work to improve global health by preventing the spread of pandemic flu. And because knowledge is the currency of the 21st century, we will increase exchanges between our students, our colleges, and our universities, which are among the best in the world. As we work to advance our shared prosperity, we can partner to address a second priority, and that is our shared security. In Mumbai, I met with the courageous families and survivors of that barbaric attack. And here in Parliament, which was itself targeted because of the democracy it represents, we honor the memory of all those who have been taken from us, including American citizens on 2611 and Indian citizens on 9-11. This is a bond that we share. It's why we insist that nothing ever justifies the slaughter of innocent men, women, and children. It's why we're working together more closely than ever to prevent terrorist attacks and to deepen our cooperation even further. 
And it's why, as strong and resilient societies, we refuse to live in fear. We will not sacrifice the values and rule of law that